All right, guys, welcome to another adventure of Starwind Aquariums. So, <laughs> been having so many problems with my tank, right? So, you know, it's almost New Year's. I've been cleaning it. Just did like a 40% water change. Usually, I don't really do a lot of water changes. I only put water in when evaporation happens. So, I just recently put this filter, as you can see, um, with some filter floss in there just to kind of help the water, uh, the water quality, how it looks. Because I've been having, for I don't know how long, phosphorus problems. And I use the Hannah checker, it's always blinking, so that means it's pretty high. So when I'm trying to put other things in there, uh, I'm kind of scared, right? So we have, uh, what's it called, coralline algae growing, as you can see, in the top. And I have to scrape some off, because obviously I'm cleaning the glass, it was pretty murky and dirty. And so, it was like, wow, so I have these Acropora, I told you, come in, and then pretty much, they're pretty much all dead. So these are the ones that I had. They came in the mail, kind of messed up. I thought, hey, maybe they'll be okay. And they're just pitch white. So, and then now they have little brown stuff on there. So pretty much I'm gonna toss them away. So I put my filter, I mean my, my wave makers to the sand to stir it. So as you can see, my sand bed is pretty brown and you can see little worms or whatnot on the side and all kind of gunk and you can see a lot of worms in there so i kind of stirred it up right um been having this tank for over five years and so you can see it's very a mature sand bed it's pretty deep i would say five to six inch deep uh sand bed and I really just needed to clean the sand so you can see the sand is kind of wisping away because I saw a lot of brown looking like detritus looking stuff all on my sand on top of it too. So I directed the, the wave makers to the sand so it can kind of stir the top up too and get most of that stuff out. So that's why I have this, um, this, uh, filter on with the wave makers going all over the place and then under I still have my um, filter sock which is probably filling up pretty much right now so that's what I kind of want to do and just have little things in there um, just to kind of disturb um, the area and so you can see that you can see little particles everywhere so I'm trying to do this for now in the water change magically made this a lot clearer because my water's dirty. I do have some um, purigen inside the the overflow box. I have um, a little bit of um, Kimi Pure, um, just a little nano piece. I didn't want to do too much because I have um, a lot of macros and stuff down there. And in the other chamber, there's a whole bunch of shade oil, probably like five pounds by now. And so I didn't want to take everything out. So I was trying to lower um, the the nitrite too because last time I checked it, it was pretty high. I don't know if it was because of die off or anything else, but I'm trying to get my tank prepared for some, some I say, um, SPS coral. But I just don't want everything to, to be in this range. So I'm kind of starting new, kind of reamping my um, tank. Obviously you see the rock flowers doing okay the gorgs doing okay my my filter over here is pretty gross um, has a little bit of um, green hair algae and that one did too but it's going away ever since I start dosing I had put a little bit of GFO also in there two days ago so obviously it's bringing everything down my main culprit is phosphate not really concerned about nitrite too much i know that the macro algae will destroy it now a lot of people say oh don't destroy your sand bed because i stirred it up a little bit because of a uh, hydrogen uh what sulfate or whatever or whatever that gas is called because usually if you go in your sand bed and if you have a big rock and it'll be black and it'll smell like some type of sulfur you'll be like whoa what the heck is this and that's a pretty much a whole bunch of gases i've dealt with that before when you don't have enough flow in your tank and a little area in the back doesn't get what it needs 
um, obviously that hydrogen sulfate the black stuff uh, will occur but that was only problems when I first started like years ago I've never seen it after after this so it's I think that's a kind of a newbie problem I guess with new tanks but this tank is pretty mature I think even this has been set up because I moved a long time ago so the tank pretty much is almost seven years old you know the rocks included too so I'm trying to figure out where is this phosphate coming from so it can be in the sand bed or it can be locked up inside the rocks so since I don't really do personally a lot of water changes nor do I skim it may have built up over time and then in the beginning I never really used a RODI machine I was using faucet water at one time because it is it is what it is and it's more convenient I was getting lazy about fixing my tank so that's what happened and then my phosphates are pretty high haven't checked it out recently I still have my HANA checkers I have every other checker um, in my house so when I did the the Red Sea test yesterday my nitrate was like freaking high so I don't know if that's where that's coming from and usually I did dose um, potassium nitrite and just for uh, macro growth but then maybe I didn't measure right so I have to watch that too so yet again you see that stirring up pretty well everyone's all scared but now it's making my uh, sand bed actually white where it was pretty much a brown tint like it had diatoms all over it so I'm gonna let this uh, occur for a minute I still have this going with the filter floss and all that and you see all these little particles flying all over the place but yet again it's just gonna um, really uh, make things go then I'm gonna get the turkey baster for the back of the rocks because sometimes rocks even lock in a lot of detritus and all kind of stuff in the back where flow might not be that much you know because obviously I might even move my rocks around to a certain point so everything can kind of distribute to a flow you know so everything else is you can see really in this light all that stuff disturbing um, just little particles everywhere and then I'm pretty sure over the next day or two if this allows to keep happening the filter socks gonna get full <laughs> I'm gonna have to change that and whatever else is gonna get caught up in the filter floss and everything else so this is cool um, almost New Year's is to December 26 um, can't wait for my other corals to come in so if you ever have a problem with corals or anything phosphate 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 phosphorus is your issue Nit nitrite nitrite whatever nitrite and, and nitrate you can get away with but phosphates is the killer like when I had all my corals before if you see my previous videos that a lot of stuff died and I was like what the heck and over the years I didn't know but phosphate 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 is a pain in the butt so it comes from fish foods it comes from overfeeding it comes from whatever water you're doing if you're using tap water you test your tap water boom phosphates 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 and so it can just build up over time some people oh well you don't do water changes and that's why man I have so much macro from down there let's see boom I have like all that macro right there I'm telling you that's pounds that's a couple right there and it's actually growing and so nitrite is you know you'll have like 0.5 ppm in there that uh sustain it but sometimes i like to keep it 10 at least 10 ppm just to make sure that things grow plus the food waste and all that equals it uh kind of get up there if the macro doesn't grow but i keep a kessel light on there at times so it can out compete the nuisance algae so everything's been going fine media i, I guarantee you some gfo I've heard nightmares. You put too much Jiffy, Jiffy, G, G, uh, GFO inside that you'll have major issues and you'll wonder why your corals are just like dying. So do not use a full recommended dose. I use like half or one third of what uh, the BRS GFO I was using. And so, boom, I have had no problems with it. And then I'm using Purigen. I'm using crushed coral down there just to make sure that the calcium, magnesium, and the pH is up. I tested the pH today with um, my HANA pH. 
after the water change and it was only seven point something so I think I'm gonna have to dose some soda ash in here to make the pH skyrocket a little bit up but first I'm gonna check my alkalinity with my Hanna checker to make sure that if I am dosing a little bit that I'm not going over 12 uh, 12 dkh because I'm just trying to have at least 10 to 12 uh, dkh dkh right now my my salinity is at 0.23 right now I put a lot of water in there so I let it evaporate as long as I'm through 23 through 26 I'm fine I let let it stay down just in case I'm not here and obviously uh, the water evaporates makes the salinity go up you don't have big problems so that's just my tips over the years have little things growing everywhere and my little starfish back there somewhere but look at these particles so thanks guys for watching any tips I need to actually buy a lot of snails I see a lot of shells in here over the years and coral frags and things that have died so um, if you're you know approaching please clean out your tank just like a body or something you leave it messed up disease and stuff happens so take out all the shells all the stuff clean your tank thanks guys for watching peace out star wind aquariums out